Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Converge here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host co and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, we're hearing, we've had a lot of great guests on already. We're hearing what customers are looking for, simplicity, uh, innovation, security. Yeah. And, and I think we're going to get to dig a little bit more into what, that, what does that really mean from a NetApp perspective and how does that really help broadly with that and within the government as well. Exactly, well I'd like to welcome our next guest to the show. She is Kristen Verderami. She is the VP Government Relations at NetApp. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming on theCUBE, Kristen. My pleasure, it's great to be here with you guys. I'm glad you're here to support NetApp and tell all the good stories. Yeah, so. well there, there's a lot of them. So yeah. let's talk about security. Okay. Um, NetApp recently pledged to support the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agencies. It's a Secure mouthful. by design <laughs> program. I know, oh That's my right. gosh, I got it out though. Um, <laughs> Talk a little bit about what it, what that means and, and why it is so so crucial. Sure. So Department of Homeland Security has a division called the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is the big mouthful. Uh, I chair the IT Sector Coordinating Council's Industry Advisory Group, called the ITSEC. Right. Our job is uh, to advise CISA and other government agencies within the U.S. government on cybersecurity policy. So uh, we have over 150 tech companies who are members of all different sizes, flavors, shapes, and sizes. Uh, and CISA comes to us and says, hey, we want to do this. And we sit there and think about how can we do that, right? There's certain things that we can or can't do. We have cost constraints. Uh, we have business plans that are all unique to all these tech companies. And the technology sometimes limits us too. We'll sometimes be able to say, we literally can't do that from a technological standpoint. So our job is to work with CISA to find that win-win, right? Where can we actually get there? So when they came to the ITSCC uh, probably two months ago, they said they wanted to launch a pledge at RSA. They're really, secure, they're really passionate about Secure by Design. They want to get companies to sign up to it officially. How can we do that? So the first version they brought us, zero companies would have signed. So we had many conversations getting it to a point where technically companies could sign up and legally companies could sign up, right? You don't want to actually publicly sign up to a pledge and not do it, or the SEC or the FTC, or you'll invite all sorts of legal issues. So we got over those two humps, and last week at RSA we announced the pledge, and 68 companies, including NetApp, wow. put their John Hancock on it. So it's been a really good, good example of how the ITSCC works with CISA, to get to their joint goals of securing this country's infrastructure. Yeah, and I, I think that's huge now, especially with people talking about, uh, again, AI being kind of, the, you know, if we don't talk about it, we'll get kicked off the internet, so yeah. we have to talk about it, but when you start to look at that, and the best practices that somebody like NetApp has been doing for forever, I mean, even when I was here, it was really big in the Fed and SLED markets, and which had, you know, pretty uh, stringent in some of the certifications, but when you start to look at those best practices and how people, and how you have to get other people, I mean, getting 68 is pretty amazing. What were some of the best practices that NetApp brought to bear that really helped CISA really get to this pledge that people could actually sign up to? Sure, so the good news is that as we're having these conversations with CISA, we realized that we were already doing almost everything on the pledge already. It's a question of how far we were required to go and when, right? Uh, our business, kind of like financial services, is really built on security. We're holding everybody's data. I think of financial services, and one of the reasons they're really the furthest ahead or very far ahead in the cybersecurity game is because that's their business case, right? If their networks go down, nobody has any money. They will have no customers. So it's the same thing for us. And you brought up AI. AI is data. We heard this morning, AI fuel, data fuels AI. I say that all the time. You've got the data, the compute, and the networking. We're a third of that story. If we don't secure that data properly and actually manage it where you can access it quickly and securely when you need to, you can't do AI. You can't do it. So for us, security is an imperative. We won't have a business if we don't take it seriously. Right, and I, I think even with that, that whole thing is being built in. Yeah, I mean, even uh, Gabe Eve talked about it and George talked about it, and I think everybody, I, I think being built in to by design, like you said, because people are bringing the AI to the data, but 
like they used to say, you know, why do people rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Why right. do people go after, you know, AI? Because that's where the data is. Is that what you're seeing as part of this whole CISA initiative was to really securing that data? 100%, and I think what CISA is trying to do, and Director Easterly, who's a great friend of ours at NetApp, uh, flip that narrative, right? So companies would come out with the latest bells and whistles for their software and put the money into the bells and whistles. She's trying to get companies to put money into the security side so that the manufacturer owns security, not the end user. You know, you and I opening up our laptop, we got to then go get a firewall and we get all these alerts to have to deal with ourselves. They're trying to prevent that from happening and put the onus on the manufacturers. We're not adverse to that, that's actually okay, as long as it's done in a way that fits those three things I talked about, right? Our cost, our business plan, and the technology. If we can figure that out, we, everybody wins. So that's what we try to look for is those win-wins. Can you talk a little bit about some of the specific ways that NetApp is, is tackling the goals of the pledge? As you said, mm -hmm. the, you're already doing, you already had mm -hmm. a lot of these best practices in place, but, right. but you do now have to get to them by a certain time. So what right. are some of the ways that NetApp is working to get there? Sure, well, we already have existing programs in place uh, to address multi-factor authentication, those types of things. Uh, and I think the area where I, I think is probably easiest to highlight is, the requirement or the goal to reduce or eliminate entire classes of vulnerabilities. That doesn't mean anyone's ever going to get rid of a class of vulnerability because it's impossible to do it. The, the hackers will innovate and innovate and innovate. But putting effort toward bigger issues, right? So Mignona Cote, who runs our security organization, has a great phishing campaign within NetApp, right? Some of us love it, some of us hate it. <laughs> but she'll send us those emails and try and trick us and then it gets reported up to your manager if you fell for the tricks, <laughs> and then yeah. you have to go do additional training. I did fall for it, I'm a cybersecurity person, I fell for a couple of them. Oh my God, well then what hope did the I rest know, of right? us have? I know, but it was good training, so now I literally never click on anything on my phone, like ever, because that's when it is least discernible, right? You really can't tell. I, that's my policy now, I never do it. And that's across the whole company. So that's raising the bar on phishing, it will never eliminate it, that's a human thing, we're never going to do that. Uh, same thing with insider threat. That's another class of vulnerability, but we have a very robust program at NetApp to address insider threat, so. Yeah, I, I mean, again, you know, sitting here in Vegas and talking about that, right? I mean, the social engineering aspect of it and some of the things that go on, like right. you said, it, it's, people aren't zero days, yes, they're definitely going after zero days and things like that, but yeah. a lot of it is the social engineering aspect of it as well. 100%. Talk to about, about that when, when you're seeing that from, the government perspective as well. They know that at the end of the day it's people who end up tripping up the systems, right? I think one of the smart ways in which they're focusing and we're working with them on is to focus on the smaller companies as well. You'll see the people who sign the pledge. We've got really big companies like us, NetApp, Microsoft, AWS. We've got a lot of small entities on there as well. This, we're only as weak, or as strong I guess, I want to get the metaphor right, as strong as the weakest link, yes. yeah? That includes small companies, our vendors. They get into our systems. The Target hack, the Home Depot hack years ago, those were from small parties that were part of the network. So the Secure by Design program and the pledge is really meant to bring in those weak links. Um, we're all human. We've got smaller companies. They have different costs and business plans than we do, the big companies. So we're trying to get everybody into the same net with the same, the same end game. So NetApp really is known for having such a, a strong culture and a positive culture. I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about how you bring that culture to your, the relationships that you have with government entities and how you work together to, to solve problems and overcome challenges and how you bring NetApp's culture to, to that working relationship and collaboration. That is a, an awesome question. I run global government relations, so I'm constantly talking with governments around the world and telling the NetApp story. We are not the most known company. I joke that we're the biggest company no one's ever heard of. The good news is we get to define the narrative when we walk in the door. And the narrative is so good. It makes my job so easy. We're partners with everybody. We're built into the three hyperscalers. We are interoperable with almost every system. So we will work with anybody. We'll do it in the cloud, we'll do it hybrid, we'll do it on-prem, we'll do a combination, we'll do it with whoever you want. So we go into governments and help them with major initiatives, which is part of our culture, right? I talked about the corporate values and caring for ourselves and our community. For example, we go into the Japanese government, which is trying to digitalize its entire government. 
and we say, look, we, we're going to be part of this however you do this. If you take five years, 10 years, it's all good. If you work with these partners or those partners, we're going to be part of it because we're friends with everybody in the ecosystem. But we've done this before and we can help you figure this out and do it the right way the first time. We won't charge you for it. We're just in here as a thought leader and an SME to kind of help get you there. That's a great example of how we kind of take our culture of helping others and securing the rest of the world um, by just being partners with people, right? Just sitting at the table with them and helping them get it done. Back to secure by design, kind of, uh, when you look out 12 months, where do you hope we are with secure by design as, as, a, as an ecosystem, yeah. not just as NetApp? Well, I hope we have a lot more people who sign the pledge. Hope we have a lot more <laughs> signatories. And I know we're going to be doing meetings with CISA along the way. Various of the vendors are going to go and meet with them and talk about how we're achieving different goals. Part of the, the process is for those of us who are maybe perhaps more sophisticated in, in cybersecurity, teaching the folks who maybe are not. So by using Director Easterly's the phrase radical transparency, right? Showing what we're doing to try and get there to these folks who may not have that same roadmap, that should improve everybody. And in cybersecurity, what I was just saying, we, you know, we raise all boats with the tide and that's really the goal. Finally, I'd love you to just reflect a little bit about your role in helping government entities uh, transform and innovate because the government is not known for um, being a fast mover in this area yeah. and, 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 and such forward thinking when it comes to technology. But this is a special moment in time. I'm, I'm curious how you would describe the, the, the people that you're working with and their mindset as they approach these problems. I think they're faced with a number of drivers to innovate, right? First of all, most governments want to be the first for AI regulation, right? Even if their own countries are very unsophisticated, they want to be the world leader on regulating AI. I won't name names, yeah. they're all my friends. But you've also got economic drivers where they want their own companies to really thrive and benefit the innovation that's out there. You've got national security right? Not just the hackers in the world, the criminal cyber people, but we've got nation states that are coming after all of us. So there are so many drivers that are forcing governments to innovate. My goal is to say, how can we make this easier for you? And it's not just NetApp. We work, as I said, many partners. We go in with partners all the time. How do we work together to get that win-win situation? Get you where you want to go without causing too much pain. Again, that's where NetApp is so much fun to work for because as we heard in the, in the presentations earlier today, we work with everybody, every system, you don't have to rip everything out. We'll work with what you've already got. We can tweak what you've already got. We're going to be in there anyway at some point, so let's help you figure out the way. So I think that's kind of the messaging and the drivers that are forcing innovation by governments to want it themselves that we can then step in and help them with. Excellent. Kristen Verarame, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A really fascinating conversation. Thank you, my pleasure. Thanks for having me here today. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Converge. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise technology coverage and analysis.